This is Miami. Uh, and the guy who's in the sewage, because he's actually in the sewage, is finding the leak. But this is not a leak. This is the ocean bubbling up. And this is happening almost every day now in Miami. The water rises through the sewage system into the street. Water is serious. Uh, and water scarcity, pollution, and too much water is at the heart of many conflicts around the world. One of those conflicts being in Syria. Research showed that water, bad water management, and the scarcity in the drought increased the conflict. But if you turn that around, it means that water management in the wrong hands can become a weapon of mass destruction. And then we're in a different world. Uh, this river created the Grand Canyon. This river. Nothing's left of it here. This is nothing to do with climate change. Although climate change increases the, uh, the, the bad situation. 65 years ago was the last time the Grand Canyon touched the Gulf of Mexico. Now it's only drops that cross the border between the US and Mexico. Uh, so again, bad management, bad pricing, bad governance. The canals in Amsterdam, you know, we show different pictures, of course, of Amsterdam, but only 10 years ago, a swan built a nest on the garbage in our canals. It was the image that started a campaign to clean them. And now our queen swims in the canal, so they must be safe, uh, sound, and good. Uh, but it took a while. It takes these images to stress the importance, to stress these challenges. 50% of the population in Africa does not have access to clean drinking water. 50%. Uh, and this is the quality of the water in Kenya. Uh, not a good thing. Kirabash, from a Dutch perspective, not so far away from Singapore. Actually, it is still uh, a pretty long travel. This is an older picture from a Dutch photographer who was chasing water around the world, uh, a good friend. I'm not sure, but I think the woman is not living in her house anymore because of sea level rise and climate change. We need to perceive these issues of water and climate change and urbanization through the lens of collaboration. Ever talk to an astronaut or listen to one? We have a Dutch, famous Dutch one who travels the Netherlands and says the planet is blue. It's a lie. The planet is not blue. It's only paint. It's a little, teeny, tiny little surface. If you take all the water of the world, all the water of the world, this is everything you have. There is no more water, nothing more. That's all the water. But if you want to use water for the industry, agriculture, energy, Mankind to drink, water is life. This is the only drop you have. There's a smaller one even, but this is the only drop you have. 170 miles, 250 kilometers in diameter uh, is all the water we can use. Water is a scarce good. People will feel the impact of climate change most strongly and profoundly through water. 90% of all disasters is already water related. It's impacting in the next decades 2 billion people because of too much water and almost another 2 billion because of a lack of water. Impacting 40% of the world's population and 15% of our regional GDPs. This summer, last summer, research showed that 50% of the largest aquifers, so this is where we store our water naturally, is these ground levels, that have water storage capacities, and they're big, as you see on the map, 50% of them are already past their tipping point. And that sounds abstract, you know, past their tipping point, and let's have dinner. Uh, past their tipping point, let's have drinks. Past their tipping point means that natural recovery is impossible. That is past their tipping point. So we exploit the water 
So a natural recovery is impossible. The only way, the most positive scenario is stabilization, which is almost impossible in such a case. Now the impact of water on our cities, on our environment, uh, on our people is big. So World Bank calculated the risks of water in 2050. And those risks add up to billions. And because the, uh, it's not so sharp, I will just name them. Miami is top of the list. $278 billion at risk in 2050. Gangzhou is second, then New York, then New Orleans. The Netherlands is on that list too, number nine, with $96 billion at risk in 2050. That's a lot of dollars in the top 10, trillions at risk, assets. But what strikes me of this picture is Africa. Africa does not light up. So if we only look through the lens of money, of finance, of assets at risk, then the poor will lose out. Because in 2050, the worth that is at risk will be not enough to intervene. So we have to rethink how we look at it.